Episode 41, Instant Kill. This year's rookie exam was finally coming to an end. In the stands, many disciples were staring at Amadeus. They were all guessing what kind of monstrous performance he would display. A month has passed. I wonder how much Amadeus' strength has improved. On the south viewing platform, Manias, who was wearing a yellow tunic, had a curious expression on his rough face. At that moment, in the arena, the gray-clothed superior gladiator said loudly, Next, Amadeus. Original sixth layer early stage. Now he's a late seventh layer. What? Late seventh layer? Manias was stunned. Although he had thought that Amadeus' training base would improve by leaps and bounds in this month, he had never thought that Amadeus' improvement would be so great. Even Manias was in a state of shock. Not to mention the disciples. All of them widened their eyes, as if they had just seen a ghost from the legends. Seven, late seventh layer. Oh my god. This, how is this possible? Monster. Monster. This fellow is simply a monster. Even Leo Marcellus and the three giants are not as powerful as him. Many of the disciples started to curse. Newcomers who had just advanced had an explosive period, but they usually only advanced one or two minor realms. It was rare to be able to break through a major realm. However, Amadeus had just broken through to the seventh layer late stage from the sixth layer. He had broken through seven minor realms. Was this something that an ordinary person could do? On the eastern stands, the three heroes and one immortal looked at each other. Amadeus, the last few words turned into a helpless sigh. They thought that after a month of hard work, even if they couldn't catch up to Amadeus, they should reduce the gap between them. Never would they have thought that the gap between them wouldn't change at all. On the contrary, it became even bigger. So much so that they wouldn't be able to catch up to Amadeus before the audience could recover from their shock. The Great Cloth Superior Gladiator once again threw down a heavy bomb. Amadeus' target is the 8th grade Intermediate Exotic Beast. Did I hear it wrong? Amadeus actually challenged the 8th grade Intermediate Exotic Beast? That's an 8th grade Intermediate Exotic Beast. Amadeus is too crazy. Many disciples of the Knighthood of the Order widened their eyes in shock. Even if Amadeus' talent was outstanding, he shouldn't have challenged an 8th grade Intermediate Exotic Beast. His bloodline was very strong and he had a lot of combat strength. But it was still not possible for him to defeat such a big creature. An ordinary 8th grade intermediate exotic beast had strength comparable to the top 30 disciples. Furthermore, this exotic beast was quite powerful. Apart from the top 10 disciples, no one could defeat this exotic beast. No matter how strong Amadeus was, there was still a gap between him and the top 10 disciples. And once Amadeus lost, even though he had extraordinary talent and had broken through seven realms in a short month, he would still be able to reach the high grade in the end. There was a difference between high grade and excellent, but the amount of resources he could enjoy was like the difference between heaven and earth. Not to mention, the fact that he was a special talent of an even higher level. For safety's sake, normal people would only choose lower tier 8 lower exotic beasts, or even lower tier 7 upper tier exotic beasts. Of course, not everyone had the same opinion. Master Delphi gave Amadeus a meaningful glance. A disciple of the late 7th layer, Challenging an 8th grade intermediate exotic beast. This little guy is still hiding his true strength. Master Delphi knew Amadeus' true strength, but he didn't expose it. 
in just a short month. Amadeus had broken through from the sixth layer early stage to the late seventh layer. Although it was scary, it was still acceptable. However, if he broke through to the eighth grade early stage, it would not be a shock. It would be a fear. Not everyone in the Mithraea warrior sect hoped that the Elite Academy could rise once again. It was even more impossible for the other eight great sects to see such an unparalleled fighter in the Mithraea warrior sect. Only those with outstanding morale conduct could easily be envied and criticized. Amadeus was really fast. His figure flashed, turned into a ray of light, and went into the arena. The next moment, with a bestial roar, a red beast shadow descended from the sky like a falling star. The arena, made of solid large limestone, exploded with a loud bang. Rocks flew everywhere and dust filled the sky. It's actually a blood moon great ape. Looking at the 30 meter tall, Red furred ape, many of the disciples' minds were greatly shaken. A trace of sympathy and pity flashed in their eyes as they looked at Amadeus. The Blood Moon Great Ape was the peak example of an 8th grade intermediate exotic beast. The terrifying strength of the Blood Moon Great Ape was able to chase after a level 9 beast king. Coupled with the fact that it had been starved for several days, and its ferocious nature had erupted, even an 8th grade intermediate exotic beast would not be a match for it. In the arena, Amadeus and the Blood Moon Great Ape were separated by a distance of 30 meters. Some intelligent beasts were very sensitive to danger, and the higher level exotic beasts were even more so. It could feel a trace of terror from this tiny human in front of him, daring him to act rashly. A trace of contempt flashed across Amadeus' eyes before breaking through. He could easily kill the Blood Moon Great Ape. Not to mention after breaking through. In his eyes, the current Blood Moon Great Ape was just a slightly stronger ant. The intelligence of a tier 8 exotic beast was not low. Not to mention that it was a monkey, which was known for its intelligence. Amadeus's undisguised contempt and ridicule had deeply enraged the Blood Moon Great Ape, causing it to let out an angry roar. An animal was an animal. The Blood Moon Great Ape, who had been completely enraged by Amadeus, did not care about anything else. It launched an attack at Amadeus. Its feet stepped on the green stone floor, and like a surging giant beast, it crushed toward Amadeus. The Blood Moon Great Ape was fast, but Amadeus was even faster. Amadeus stomped on the ground and leaped into the air. His body tore through the air like an arrow leaving a bow. In a split second, he had already crossed several dozen feet and arrived in front of the Blood Moon Great Ape. With a twist of his body, he threw a punch aiming the beast's chest with lightning speed. Amadeus did not use any combat skill, nor did he use any secret technique. It was just a direct punch. But the power contained within it was immense. It could easily blow up an 8th level gladiator. A bad omen swept across the heart of the Blood Moon Great Ape, causing it to let out a sorrowful roar before it died. The blood and blessings of Mithraea in his body surged like a tidal wave. His right arm, which was more than three meters long, gathered all the energy in his body and punched out explosively. The man and beast collided with each other with a bang. It was as if a comet had crashed into the ground. In a single breath, the sounds of bones cracking rang out, and the violent force directly shattered the Blood Moon Great Ape's finger bones, wrist bones, arm bones, and shoulders. It wasn't over yet. The force of the fist didn't decrease. Under the despairing gaze of the Blood Moon Great Ape, 
it smashed into its chest. In an instant, the incomparably terrifying force shattered the sternum and shattered the powerful heart. The 30-foot-tall ape's body fell to the ground with a loud bang, causing dust to fill the sky. The entire audience was silent. After a long while, there were a few whispers. What did I see? Instant kill? The Blood Moon Great Ape was instantly killed by Amadeus just like that? Is that really an 8th grade intermediate exotic beast Blood Moon Great Ape? And not a 6th grade intermediate exotic beast like a diamond gigantic ape? My goodness, I never thought that I would still underestimate you. Your true combat strength is probably as strong as that of the three giants. Looking at Amadeus on the arena, the corner of Master Delphi's eyes revealed a trace of excitement. Others might not know, but he could see it clearly. From beginning to end, Amadeus had never used any combat skill. In the next moment, Master Delphi opened his mouth and announced loudly, Amadeus' talent is extraordinary, and his potential is unparalleled. The evaluation for this examination is perfect. Episode 42, Strategy Perfect evaluation? That's too high, right? In the stands, many disciples' hearts were violently shaken. There were a total of nine grades in the rookie assessment. Level one was hard to break through. It had been nearly 3,000 years since the founders had established the Elite Academy. The number of people who could obtain a perfect evaluation could be counted on one hand. Even Leo Marcellus had only gotten a special evaluation. This was also because the geniuses of Elite Academy had declined in the past hundred years. If this had been a few hundred years ago, when the Elite Academy stood at its peak, they would only be able to obtain an outstanding evaluation. However, thinking about Amadeus's outstanding performance, it seemed like getting a perfect evaluation wasn't that unacceptable. Who could break through seven realms in a short month? Who could kill an eighth grade intermediate exotic beast with a single punch? In the entire greater peak, there was only Amadeus. Looks like it won't be long before the three giants become a thing of the past. Our elite academy will respect Amadeus. Many of the disciples felt enlightened. Every new disciple who received a perfect evaluation would be fully nurtured by the peak pulse. They would enjoy treatment of the top ten disciples of the Nine Master. The rich resources within were beyond the disciples of the Knighthood of the Order's imagination. At this moment, Amadeus's combat strength had already caught up to the top 10 greatest disciples of the Knighthood of the Order, and he had received the support of the upper echelons of the Peak Pulse. His training base and strength would certainly improve by leaps and bounds, catching up to the top 10 disciples and even the three giants. Some of the female disciples' eyes had already become heart shaped. Amadeus's rise was just around the corner. With his heaven-defying talent, he was almost certain that he could break through the bone-forging stage. It was even possible for him to break through to expert at the combat marquee stage. Halfway up Elite's peak, on the first floor of the ancient combat skill pavilion, the superior gladiator was gloomy. He sat on the armrest of a chair, Wearing a green tunic, he held a cup of fragrant tea and savored it carefully. His brows were relaxed, and though they were gloomy, they were as steady as the Apennine Mountains. At this moment, a disciple in a blue tunic hurriedly ran in. He panted as he reported to the superior gladiator. 
Superior Gladiator. The results of the rookie assessment are out. The results are out. What kind of evaluation did Amadeus get? The Superior Gladiator slowly drank some tea and said, He was still concerned about Amadeus' situation. Master Delphi gave him a perfect evaluation. What? Perfect evaluation? How is this possible? The Superior Gladiator stood up from the Grand Preceptor's chair in a huff, his face filled with disbelief. He didn't even know that the teacup in his hand had fallen to the ground. Superior Gladiator, every word I say is true. It's not a lie. How could this be? The Superior Gladiator's voice was slightly trembling, and a trace of fear flashed across his eyes. He was very clear about the meaning of a perfect evaluation. For the past 3,000 years, every single one who had received a perfect evaluation was an expert at the combat marquee stage. He stood at the pinnacle of the Roman Empire. Even though the current rookie assessment was a little exaggerated, Amadeus' potential was not as good as the previous few. However, it was still possible for him to break through to bone-forging perfection and reach the 10th Combat Master. As for the Superior Gladiator, he was only at the first level of the Combat Master, with his low-grade rank 8 bloodline talent. Even if he trained hard for his entire life, he might not be able to break through to the Combat Master 4th Layer Realm. At this time, it would be very easy for Amadeus to teach him a lesson. In an instant, endless regret surged into the superior gladiator's heart. Say, you are the dignified, the superior gladiator of the combat skill pavilion, Amadeus said. Why are you meddling in the trivial matters of a disciple of the knighthood of the order? If there was a medicine for regret in this world, the superior gladiator would definitely buy it without hesitation. He had actually offended such a genius. Was there anything more foolish than this in this world? It has already happened. No matter how much I regret it, it is useless to do so. It's better to think about how to deal with it now. The superior gladiator narrowed his eyes. I should kill him while his foundation is not stable yet. No way. The risk is too great. It is likely that that brat had already attracted the attention of the upper echelons. If I am not careful, I am afraid I won't be able to gain a foothold in the Apennine Mountains. We still have to make a big decision. It's all Seneca's fault. If it wasn't for this kid, how could I have offended Amadeus? I almost forgot that the one who didn't want to see Amadeus rise up to the most was Seneca. Seneca had his back against Leo Marcellus. He didn't have the chance to fight Amadeus. All right, I'll see what kind of trick Seneca has. Then I'll figure this out. Seneca, who was wearing a white training uniform, roared loudly. His temperament was as fierce as a tiger's. His entire body soared into the sky. He kept moving in the air, leaving after images behind him as he moved. He suddenly let out a loud shout, and all the bones in his body exploded. The inner forces all over his body were like a great river, surging endlessly. Suddenly, Seneca's leg kicked out. A heart-wrenching and terrifying sound erupted in the air a tall, rocky outcrop at the edge of the training field exploded. The sound of warm applause rang out. Disciples of the Knighthood of the Order came up from the outer perimeter of the training field, and they lavished all kinds of compliments on him, making Seneca's heart burst with joy. However, at this moment, a white-tuniced disciple ran into the training field in a panic. He kept shouting, Brother Seneca, it's not good. Adriana Samata, what did you say? Seneca's face changed. He was very unhappy. Didn't I ask you to go and find out about that kid's test results? 
What's the result? Brother Seneca, that kid... Adriana Samata stammered. What happened to that kid? Did he get the same evaluation as senior brother Leo Marcellus? A trace of seriousness flashed across Seneca's eyes. If that kid really obtained this special evaluation, the situation would be bad. No, he didn't. It's still all right. Upon hearing this, Seneca immediately felt relieved. Even though it was rare to see a level 3 outstanding talent, it was not a big threat to them. He only needed to wait for Leo Marcellus to return to the sect, and then he could teach that kid a lesson. Not an outstanding talent? Seneca's facial expression changed once again. He asked suspiciously, Amadeus only got a grade 4 excellent? He had the strength to fight against the top hundred disciples of the Knighthood of the Order, since he had just entered the Knighthood. How could Amadeus only be a superior grade 4? Amadeus got a perfect evaluation. Adriana Samara finally said what he wanted to say in one breath. How is this possible? Even Leo Marcellus only got a special grade. What ability does that kid have to get a perfect evaluation? Just like the superior gladiator Seneca's first reaction was disbelief. Brother Seneca, I have witnessed all of this with my own eyes. There is no lie in it. What? He broke through seven minor realms in a month? He destroyed a tier 8 exotic beast blood moon great ape with a single punch. How is this possible? Seneca's face was filled with disbelief. This was something that a normal person could do? But the last shred of reason told him that what Adrianus Amatis said was the truth. He had no reason or need to use this kind of thing to fool him. Seneca took a deep breath and calmed down the shock in his heart. Suddenly, a trace of ruthlessness flashed across his handsome face. His eyes was like a poisonous snake. It caused one's hair to stand on end. He has grown to such a level in just a short month. If I give him some more time, how terrifying. It seems like I can't wait for a senior brother Marcellus to return before making my move. Episode 43, Down the Mountain. After the rookie assessment ended, Amadeus did not head back to the mountain to hunt for exotic beasts. Instead, he went back to his courtyard with Manias and ordered some food and wine. The two of them had a good meal to celebrate Amadeus's perfect evaluation. The next day, it was almost noon when Amadeus slowly woke up. The feeling of getting drunk is really unpleasant, shaking his head, which was still somewhat dizzy. Amadeus smiled bitterly and struggled to get up from the bed. He used cold water to wash his face before he woke up a little. After eating some food, Amadeus prepared to head to the training field to practice his combat skill. The path of becoming a gladiator was like sailing against the current. If one did not advance, one would fall back. However, at this moment, a man's voice came from the courtyard. Is this Amadeus's courtyard? Who is this? Amadeus quickly walked out and opened the door of the courtyard. Outside the door stood a 20-year-old young man. He was dressed in a blue tunic and had long hair that reached his waist. His facial features were not handsome, but they could still be considered clean. His presence was very powerful, as powerful as Publius. He could be considered an expert of the elite. However, Amadeus didn't know this man. Who are you? Amadeus frowned slightly. Amadeus, you don't know me, but I know you. Recently, there has been rumors about you everywhere. Today, I see that you are indeed a handsome man with an imposing appearance. You are a rare genius in this world. The young man smiled faintly, 
and there was a hint of flattery in his smile. I don't deserve your praise, bro. Amadeus smiled modestly. Amadeus, my words are sincere. You have just advanced to the knighthood of the order, and you have already defeated Publius, one of the top hundred disciples. Looking at the history of the Mithraea warrior sect, there aren't many people who have done what you've done. In just a month's time, you have surpassed seven minor realms in a row. This is something that has never happened in history. Your actual combat strength is even more terrifying. Even an 8th grade intermediate exotic beast is no match for you. Looking at the entire knighthood of the order, I'm afraid I can find a few people who are a match for you. Your talent is so high. Your potential is so great that even Leo Marcellus and the others are far inferior to you. In the future, you will be the number one warrior in Great Peak. The young man continued. I forgot to introduce myself. I am also of the Knighthood of the Order. You may call me Ancus Brutus. Ancus Brutus. Why did you come to find me? Amadeus was even more confused. It was impossible that Brutus had come all the way there just to praise him. A trace of vigilance appeared in the corner of Amadeus's eyes. Could it be that this Ancus Brutus also wanted to plot against him? My memory is really bad. I almost forgot the important thing I came here for. Ancus Brutus patted his forehead and said with some regret, Amadeus, it was Master Delphi who told me to come and find you. He wants to see you. Master Delphi wants to see me? The doubt on Amadeus's face did not disappear. Master Delphi was one of the five great masters in Greater Peak, and Amadeus was just a newbie. Logically speaking, there shouldn't be any relationship between the two. That's right, Ancus Brutus nodded. Amadeus carefully looked at Ancus Brutus for a while and found that the man's expression did not show any signs of scheming. So he nodded and said, All right, I'll go right away. Amadeus's combat skills were high now, and he was also bold. If he used all his trump cards now, he was confident that he would be as strong as Leo Marcellus and the three giants on the greater peak. Except for a few masters, he didn't fear anyone. Even if this Ancus Brutus really had some kind of plot going, he was confident that he could deal with it. After closing the door, Amadeus followed Ancus Brutus and left the courtyard area. The two of them quickly stepped onto a big road and walked toward the top of the mountain. Ancus Brutus, why is Master Delphi looking for me? Amadeus was confused. Amadeus, I am just an errand boy. I don't know what Master Delphi is thinking. Ancus Brutus shook his head in embarrassment. He would never hide anything. Amadeus's combat skills were very powerful. At this moment, in Greater Peak, everyone knew it. It was only a matter of time before Amadeus replaced the three giants and dominated Greater Peak. To Ancus Brutus, it was absolutely beneficial to have a good relationship with Amadeus. But unfortunately, he really didn't know the answer to his question. But don't worry, Amadeus. It's definitely not a bad thing for Master Delphi to look for you. Hearing this, Amadeus nodded in agreement. If this Ancus Brutus wasn't lying to him and Master Delphi really was looking for him, then it shouldn't be a bad thing. Amadeus had a pretty good impression of Master Delphi. Furthermore, based on his performance yesterday, as long as Master Delphi wasn't stupid, it wouldn't make things difficult for him. They talked as they walked. To be precise, most of the time, it was Ancus Brutus complimenting Amadeus. Soon, the two of them entered an exquisite courtyard near the peak of the mountain. The first thing they saw was a large garden. It covered an area of several tens of acres of farmland, and there were all kinds of strange flowers and plants planted within it. Hundreds of flowers were buzzing, and the fragrance assailed their nostrils, making them feel intoxicated. 
it was not difficult to tell that Master Delphi was an elegant person. After passing through the garden, they went straight to the main hall. Amadeus glanced over and saw Master Delphi wearing white clothes. He was sitting on the main seat, leisurely sipping tea. Below it, six young men were standing, dressed in the tunics of the knighthood of the order. To be precise, it looked like five people surrounding one person like a moon surrounded by stars. That was a tall and burly man, roughly 21 or 22 years old. His facial features were as hard as granite. He stood in the hall with a large saber on his back. He had the presence of a crane standing in a flock of chickens. And his spiritual presence was not something the other five could match. The invisible saber energy was rippling with his body as the center. Amadeus was shocked. He could faintly feel a faintly dangerous attitude coming from the tall and burly man's body. He felt that someone at Publius's level would not be able to stop him for one round. Amadeus? When he saw Amadeus, Master Delphi hurriedly stood up from his seat and greeted him with a smile. His attitude was like that of a completely different person. There was even a hint of flattery. Ancus Brutus, who was watching from the side, was dumbfounded. Was this still the Master Delphi that he knew? Good, Master Delphi, Amadeus said with a slightly respectful tone. Amadeus, the road to becoming a gladiator is full of obstacles. If you want to climb to the peak of a gladiator, you have to constantly cut down all the thorns and walk forward bravely. If you don't have the courage, no matter how talented you are, your achievements will be limited. I have also heard all about what happened to you. You have just reached the beginning, and you have already killed Publius. What does Master Delphi mean by saying all this? Could it be that he wants to stand up for Publius? Amadeus's heart tightened, and a deep melancholy flashed across his eyes. If that was really the case, then things wouldn't be good. Currently, he was no longer afraid of the three giants of the Knighthood of the Order like Leo Marcellus. Inwardly, his thoughts rumbled. However, to a bone-forging stage martial master like Master Delphi, he was still just an ant. At most, he would only be slightly stronger. A combat master and a gladiator. The difference was just words, but there was an intrinsic difference. Seemingly seeing through Amadeus's worries, Master Delphi lightly laughed, saying, Amadeus, don't think too much about it. Life and death in the life and death arena are determined by fate. Publius's death can only be blamed on his lack of skill, but it can't be blamed on you. Furthermore, a peerless genius like you will be highly regarded by the sect. It's impossible for them to find trouble with you because of Publius. Although the words of Master Delphi were cruel, they were the truth. No one would make things difficult for a true genius just because of a worthless dead man. Then, Master, why are you looking for me? Amadeus's furrowed brows relaxed a little. Amadeus, don't be nervous. I mean no harm. Master Delphi hurriedly explained. He didn't want Amadeus to misunderstand. I called you here today for two things. The first is to tell you that you will be treated as a disciple of the Nine Master in the future. This is your monthly benefit. As he spoke, he handed a small bag to Amadeus. What a lucky kid, said the people in the hall including a tall and sturdy man who was looking at Amadeus with eyes filled with envy. Just thinking about how the disciples of the Ten Great Nine Master were treated was enough to make people drool. Thank you, Master. Amadeus hurriedly thanked him and took the small bag. Train well. Master Delphi patted Amadeus' shoulder. The future of my greater peak will depend on you. Amadeus smiled but didn't say anything. 
If he agreed to it directly, it would be too impolite. But if he denied it, it would be hypocritical. Master Delphi was not angry at his lack of response. He smiled and said again, Second, I have a mission for you. I need you to go down to the mountain. Amadeus paused, unsure if he had heard the master clearly. Wait, you want me to go down the mountain? Episode 44, Demon Trace. What? You want me to go down the mountain? Amadeus froze on the spot. The Mithraea warrior sect had strict rules. The servant disciples were not allowed to go down the mountain casually. In fact, without permission, even the disciples in Servicemen's Peak were not allowed to descend the mountain. Although disciples of the Knighthood of the Order had a little more freedom, Amadeus was still a newcomer who had just advanced like them. He only had one chance to go down the mountain once a year, which was to go home to visit his family during the Spring Festival. It was only the beginning of September. There were still several months until the Spring Festival, the biggest festival of the year. That's right, Master Delphi nodded. Master Delphi, I just broke through to the knighthood of the Order. If I go down the mountain now, I'm afraid it will be against the rules, right? Amadeus hesitated. He couldn't help but miss his parents after not seeing them for two months. He wanted more than anything to tell his parents about his advancement. He wanted to tell them that their son wasn't just trash, that he was better than those so-called genius heroes. You go down the mountain under my orders, so how could it be against the rules? Master Delphi found his concern somewhat funny. Moreover, you are going down the mountain to carry out the sect's mission, not to have fun. Mission? At this moment, Amadeus remembered that Master Delphi had mentioned that there was a mission for him to complete. He had forgotten about it because he was too shocked to hear that he would go down a mountain. Amadeus scratched his head in embarrassment and asked suspiciously, Master... What is the mission? For rookies like him, the missions were usually to collect medicinal herbs or exotic beast blood, bones, or hair. For that, he did not need to leave the Apennine Mountains at all. It is in Parthenope of Neapolis. Your mission is to investigate the movement of a group of demons that have been causing trouble there and then take the opportunity to eliminate them. Master Delphi spoke in a light tone, but in Amadeus's ears, it sounded like a clap of thunder, causing him to almost jump. What? But I just broke through. If not for the fact that Master Delphi did not have a trace of malice in his eyes, Amadeus would really have thought that he was plotting to frame him. The demon that had been harassing Parthenope was called a bloodthirsty demon. It liked to devour the brains, bone marrow, and blood essences of humans. It was the mortal enemy of humans and several times more ferocious than exotic beasts. With his current training, he could not even defeat a few demon soldiers. Amadeus, there's no need for you to worry. According to the information I have, in Parthenope, there are just a few middle demon soldiers. With your strength, a few middle demon soldiers are nothing to you. Master Delphi laughed. He was asking Amadeus to go down the mountain to eliminate the demons in order to nurture Amadeus. It was not to frame him. He would never let Amadeus face a troublesome opponent. Only a few middle demon soldiers? Amadeus murmured. 
The demonic clan's combat strength was far greater than those of the same level gladiators, and it was several times more ferocious than that of an exotic beast. When many gladiators faced these demons, they were usually afraid before the battle started, and their combat strength couldn't even reach half of the demon's full strength. Middle Demon soldiers were strong enough to fight a high-ranked, pulse-opening stage gladiator. However, Amadeus still had the confidence to defeat all of them. Besides, this is a rare opportunity. As long as you can complete the mission, you will receive 10,000 sect contribution points. Master Delphi enticed him once more. What? Amadeus' entire body trembled, and his breathing became much heavier. In order to exchange for an ordinary low-grade, yellow-level combat skill, he would only need one to two hundred sect contribution points. One thousand points from the sect was more than enough to exchange for a decent intermediate combat skill. And ten thousand contribution points from the sect was more than enough to exchange for superior combat skills. And with the benefits of being one of the top ten disciples of the Nine Master, he was qualified to enter the third floor of the Combat Skill Pavilion to exchange for superior combat skills. Even if the superior gladiator acted up again, Amadeus could exchange these 10,000 sect contribution points for a large amount of training materials. A single spirit stone was equivalent to a hundred sect contribution points. Even a top grade elixir like the marrow cleansing pill only required a thousand sect contribution points. But I've never seen a demon before. I'm afraid it's very difficult to find their whereabouts. Amadeus still had some concerns. The demonic clan was very good at hiding. If they disguised themselves as humans and hid in the town, it would be very difficult for him to find them. Amadeus, I have my own plans for this. This is Valor. He is a seventh layer huge perfection. And his main training is in saber arts. This time, you will follow his team to Parthenope to carry out a mission. Master Delphi pointed at the burly man beside him. He is Pius Valor? Amadeus narrowed his eyes, and a bright light flashed across them. Pius Valor was considered a legendary figure in Greater Peak, and he was ranked in the top ten disciples of the Elite Academy. He was ranked sixth on the list, and he was also known as the number one saber trainee in the Knighthood of the Order. Pius, he has killed a lot of demons, including a few upper demon soldiers. With him leading the team, this mission will definitely be foolproof. As he spoke, Master Delphi had already brought Amadeus to Pius Valor. Within a few steps of the hero, Amadeus could feel an invisible blade force whistling around Pius Valor's body. It was majestic and imposing. He was worthy of being called the sixth man of the Elite Academy. His strength was formidable. Pius, this is Amadeus. Both of you are the hope of Elite Academy. You two must get along well with each other in the future. Master Delphi smiled at Pius Valor. Amadeus has great talent and potential. But I don't know how much courage he has. Don't be so scared that your legs go soft when you see the demons. Without waiting for Pius Valor to speak, the surrounding disciples started to speak in a strange tone. If a genius doesn't have enough courage, no matter how great his potential is, he is just trash. Shut up! Surprisingly, Master Delphi's expression turned cold, and so did his voice. 
What right did they have to mock and ridicule Amadeus? Master Delphi, you don't need to bicker with these few brats. Pious Valor, who had been silent the whole time, spoke. Quickly apologized to Amadeus. He is a peerless genius that only appears once every few hundred years in Elite Academy. Yes, Valor is right. Amadeus, don't take it to heart. Amadeus, for my sake, please forgive them this time. We are all from the same sect. It is such a small matter. Let it pass. Amadeus spoke politely, but he was sneering in his heart. He was not a fool. All of this was the result of Pious Valor deliberately indulging and even hinting at him. Otherwise, how could they have the courage? Amadeus, I admire you. Suddenly, Pious Valor changed the topic. But what you said doesn't make sense. Amadeus, the demons are different from exotic beasts. They are very ferocious and beyond your imagination. Although Amadeus has extraordinary talent, he hasn't faced a demon. The reward for completing the mission was 10,000 sect contribution points. However, it was not 10,000 sect contribution points per person, but 10,000 contribution points for everyone. However, before he could finish speaking, he was interrupted by Master Delphi. Pious Valor, that's enough. How could Master Delphi not see through Pious Valor's thoughts? If it wasn't for the fact that he was also a genius of their bloodline, they would have shown him some power a long time ago. Alright, the mission is decided. Now, all of you go back and pack your luggage. Tomorrow morning, all of you will gather at the square at the mountainside. After that, all of you will head down the mountain to Parthenope. Amadeus returned to his courtyard again. It was already night. He sat down cross-legged. With a flip of his hand, a small, jade-green bag appeared. Amadeus' spiritual sense moved, and his mental energy, which was not much weaker than an ordinary Empyrean combat master's, surged out. In an instant... Everything in the small bag was deeply imprinted in Amadeus's mind. Master Delphi was indeed worthy of being called the first peak master, a combat expert. He was much more generous than the disciples of the Knighthood of the Order. The small bag's limits were almost within a square meter. A top-grade small bag like this was worth a lot. Compared to many top-grade spirit artifacts... It was even more valuable. It could be sold for at least 30 spirit stones. Amadeus didn't think that Master Delphi would casually give it to him like this. When Amadeus sensed everything within the small bag, the smile on his face grew even wider. Each piece of spirit stone the size of a duck egg was as large as 20 pieces. Five three-inch tall white marbled bottles were filled with upper-class elixirs. Supreme grade spirit invigorating pills. No wonder even Pious Valor, one of the top ten disciples of the Knighthood of the Order, was envious and jealous. This benefit was really too high. A first-grade, supreme-grade, upper-class elixir like the supreme-grade spirit invigorating pill. Each bottle required three spirit stones. So, that was a total of 35 spirit stones. An ordinary disciple would not be able to get a single spirit stone, even if he worked hard for a year. Even for Yun Fei Yang, and the rest of the three giants, earning 100 spirit stones a year was already their limit. The gap between Master and the disciples outside the sect was just too great. 
Amadeus smiled with satisfaction. He kept the small bag close to his body. He was thinking about whether he should give the eliminated small bag to Manias. Amadeus was a person who knew how to be grateful. He would always remember the kindness of others in his heart. Amadeus's thoughts turned slightly. He poured out a supreme grade spirit invigorating pill. After today's practice, Amadeus would go down the mountain to Parthenope the next day. Tonight, Amadeus did not intend to enter the back mountain to hunt for exotic beasts. Fortunately, his mental state far exceeded his training. As for the other gladiators, for every elixir they refined it took a lot of time to stabilize their training base. Amadeus's progress wasn't much slower than the exotic beasts he absorbed. Of course... It was still impossible for Amadeus to evolve his bloodline. In an instant, a huge amount of medicinal strength surged into Amadeus' body like fire. Amadeus quickly focused his mind and circulated the three solar pulse opening stage skill. He refined the medicinal strength and attacked the spirit that was stuck in his body. Episode 45 I Will Let You Know the Reason for Your Death Early the next morning, Amadeus said goodbye to Manias and went to the square on the mountainside alone. He gave Manias the small bag that he had gotten from Publius. Manias grabbed his hand to express his gratitude. Although Amadeus had easily obtained two small bags, they were not ordinary items. In fact, among the thousand of disciples of the Knighthood of the Order, in Greater Peak, there were no more than 200 such bags. When Amadeus arrived at the square on the mountainside, there were already seven horses standing in the middle of the square. They were extremely handsome. These were purebred stallions. According to the legends, they were the descendants of the Hydra and the Pegasus, and they contained a trace of the Hydra's bloodline. They could travel 3,000 miles in a day and 2,000 miles in a night. They were the best mounts in the world. In the vast Roman Empire, only Caesar's family and the nine great sects were qualified to possess such mounts. It was impossible for the other great families to ride such horses. Soon, Pius Valor and his pious squad arrived as well. Pius was wearing a fiery red cloak and carrying a single saber in his back. He looked incomparably domineering. He gave people the impression that he was a treasured saber that was about to be unsheathed, piercingly cold and sharp. Amadeus, let's go, he called out, then turned around and got onto a purebred stallion. Amadeus imitated Pius Valor and jumped into the air onto the back of his own stallion. Very quickly, a group of seven people rode away on the purebred stallions, leaving behind billowing smoke. Amadeus, don't let me down. Master Delphi looked at Amadeus, who was gradually disappearing into the distance. A trace of seriousness flashed across his eyes. The demons were different from exotic beasts. Their ferocity far exceeded the imagination. Many geniuses had the ability to jump ranks to challenge others, but did not dare to fight demons. In the end, they were injured. Their brains blood, and bone marrow would all become nutrients for the demons to grow. Neapolis was a large city in the northernmost part of the Western Road. It was 8,000 miles away from the Apennine Mountains. Even though the purebred stallion could travel 3,000 miles per day and travel 2,000 miles at night, 
it would still take two to three days for them to reach their destination. In the beginning, Pius Valor and his squad were still kind to Amadeus. But after they left the Apennine Mountains, their attitude changed. They once again spoke coldly to Amadeus. Amadeus, we can't compare to your talent and potential, but it's hard to say whether your courage is useful or not. Don't think that you can face the demon with ease just because you can kill an exotic beast. You have to understand that exotic beasts and the demons are two completely different concepts. Sometimes, you need to be realistic about your ability. Otherwise, you will die. Amadeus, do you agree? With your talent and potential, you are destined to step into the combat master stage in the future. You might even open your profound aperture and become a Marquess. Why do you need to take such a risk now? In my opinion, when we reach Neapolis, Amadeus, you should find an inn so that you can rest for a few days. We will do whatever it takes to eliminate the demons and devils. You don't need to worry about that. A few demon soldiers are not enough to scare me. Amadeus said with a cold smile. Pius Valor, who had been watching from the sidelines, suddenly spoke up. Amadeus, although their words are not very pleasant, it's all for your own good. You only have one life. If you lose your life, everything else will be meaningless. Listen to his advice. You can have fun in Neapolis for a few days. You are still young, so you might not know this. The girls at the foot of the mountain are as gentle as water when it comes to the disciples of the sect. They will listen to your orders and serve you well. After saying that, Pius Valor even smiled at Amadeus. Valor, thank you for your good intentions, but since I have accepted this mission, I will not give up. Valor, the other said, since Amadeus is determined to seek death, we don't have to stop him. Since Amadeus wants to see the demon so much, we will fulfill his wish. I hope that when he sees them, he won't not cry and look for his mother. A cold light flashed across Amadeus' eyes. The more he refuted them, the more enthusiastic these people would be with their taunts. Actions speak louder than words. When he killed a few demons, they would know whether Amadeus had the courage or not. Half a day later, the group of seven had already traveled a thousand miles. Amadeus, you must be tired. We will rest here for a while and eat something. Suddenly, Pius Valor, who was in front of them, spoke. After he finished speaking, he pulled the reins and stopped without waiting for the others to agree. Are we resting here? A trace of doubt flashed across Amadeus' eyes. He saw many lone graves in front of him, and many places were littered with white bones. It was an indescribable terror. This was obviously a mass grave. Right at that moment, Pius Valor and his pious squad jumped down from the purebred stallions, one after another. They spread out in all directions, as if they were going to surround Amadeus. Valor? What is the meaning of this? Amadeus's facial expression changed, and he spoke in a deep voice. Pious Valor did not answer Amadeus' question directly. Instead, he pointed at the mass graves in front of him and asked in an indirect manner, Amadeus, are you satisfied with the tomb I chose for you? You want to kill me? Aren't you afraid of the punishment of sect? 
Don't forget, the sect strictly forbids disciples of the Knighthood of the Order from fighting in private. Amadeus furrowed his brows in disbelief. Amadeus, it seems like I have to teach you some knowledge. The sect forbids disciples from fighting at will. Any grudges between disciples must be resolved in the arena. This is to protect the weak disciples. But... Pius Valor paused for a moment. With a proud expression, he said, This rule only works in the sect. After leaving the sect, who is there to care about you? Furthermore, in this desolate mountain and wilderness, who will know that I killed you? Are the rules of the sect only applicable on the mountain? Amadeus suddenly had a flash of understanding in his heart, but his mouth was filled with doubt. Valor, there shouldn't be any unresolved grudges between us, right? Why did you want to kill me? This was what Amadeus didn't understand. He and Pilus Valor hadn't known each other before this. There wasn't even a whiff of a conflict between them. At most, Pius Valor was unhappy about Amadeus's sudden appearance. They had just distributed the rewards for Pius Valor and the other's mission. But for such a small matter, Amadeus doubted that Valor would kill him. After all, Amadeus was not a weak link, and Master Delphi was backing him. Once this matter was exposed, there would be no place for Pius Valor in the entire Mithraea warrior sect. So, it wasn't worth it at all. Pius Valor pondered for a moment. He smiled coldly and said, Seeing that we are from the same sect, I will let you know the reason for your death today. Thousands of miles away from the Apennine Mountains, under the mass grave of the desolate people, Pius Valor and his pious squad had spread out in all directions, surrounding Amadeus. Everyone's intention to kill Amadeus had been revealed, and they wanted to kill him here. In the face of this desperate situation, Amadeus voiced the doubts in his heart. He had no grudges with Pius Valor and the others in the past. At most, they just didn't like each other. Why did Pius Valor and the others take the risk of being severely punished by the sect to kill Amadeus? Amadeus really did not understand. Pius Valor didn't know if it was because of the friendship between the two of them, or because he pitied Amadeus, who was about to die. He generously revealed everything. Episode 46, Amadeus versus Pius Valor. Amadeus, there is no grudge between us. Although I am a little unhappy that Master Delphi forced you to join our team, it is not to the extent that I would want to kill you. It's a pity that some people don't like you. Someone paid a huge price for me to take your life. So, I can only apologize to you. Who is that person? Amadeus blurted out. At the same time, in his mind, there were a few figures. The high and mighty superior gladiator, the scheming Seneca, and Paulinus Barbo, whose face was as sinister as a poisonous snake. In the huge Mithraea warrior sect, although there were many people who didn't like Amadeus, they were the only ones who wanted to kill him. Amadeus, there's no harm in telling you. Pius Valor laughed lightly and said, It's Seneca. It's him. 
and Medeiros' heart froze. Looks like some people really think that I, Amadeus, won't kill people. Great. This is just great. As for whether Pius Valor was lying to Amadeus, he did not have the slightest doubt. First, Seneca really wanted Amadeus to die. He had the motive to kill Amadeus. Second, in Pius Valor's eyes, Amadeus was like a fat piece of meat on a chopping board, ready to be butchered. There was no need for him to lie to Amadeus. Amadeus, I have already told you what I should have told you. Now is the time to send you to hell. Pius Valor sneered, and his eyes were filled with the thirst of murder. Valor, do you really think you can defeat me? Amadeus, you are the only genius I have ever seen in my life. You have been at the beginning for a month. Your combat strength is comparable to that of my top 10 disciples. And your talent is extremely high. Even Leo Marcellus and the other two disciples found it hard to fight back against you. Unfortunately, you are still too young and your ability is limited. Today, you will not be able to escape. Surrender, and we will leave your corpse intact. Pius Valor was full of confidence. He looked like he could defeat Amadeus. He knew Amadeus' strength very well. Amadeus could kill the Blood Moon Ape, an eighth grade intermediate exotic beast, with a single punch even if he wasn't as powerful as the ten great disciples, he was almost there. Although Amadeus was strong, Pius Valor and the others were stronger, putting aside the sixth of Pius Valor's top ten disciples. None of his subordinates in the Pius squad were weak. The worst one was only slightly weaker than Publius. He was strong enough to make it into the top 200 of Greater Peak. And the strongest one was ranked in the top 50. With the seven of them combined, it was enough to wipe out any one of the top 10 disciples of the three giants. You want me to surrender without putting up a fight? Dream on. Since you are so stubborn, then don't blame for being rude to you. A fierce look flashed in Pius Valor's eyes, and his voice was extremely cold, causing people to shiver. The next moment, Pius Valor waved his hand, signaling the Pius squad to stand guard in all directions, in order to prevent Amadeus from breaking out of the encirclement. Amadeus took a step forward, and in an instant, a sharp blade of energy burst out from his fur, cutting the air in all directions with an explosive sound. Obviously, Pius Valor didn't want the Pius squad to gang up on Amadeus. Geniuses had their own pride. Pius Valor, who was a peerless blade artist, was even more proud. Amadeus wasn't worthy of Pius Valor joining forces with others shamelessly. Amadeus was slightly stunned. He did not expect Pius Valor to give up on ganging up on him and choose to fight him alone. At that moment, Pius Valor unsheathed his blade. It was a four-foot-long broadsword with a thick and ancient look to it. The Overlord Strike was a supreme grade spirit artifact. Pius Valor had obtained it from an ancient cave and had much gratitude to the gods who had led him to it. With the saber in hand, Pius Valor's confidence suddenly rose steadily. The sharpness and coldness of the swordsman instantly swept through the entire audience. 
Amadeus? You can die without regrets under my overlord strike. You want my life? You are not qualified. At that moment, a terrifying wind swept out with Amadeus at the center. It was mixed with intense heat. The heat waves swept across the sky and covered the earth. The air in the surrounding space was distorted. It made him feel like he was in a scorching atmosphere. It was like he was in an extremely urgent situation. There is a volcano ready to erupt inside Amadeus. It has the potential to destroy the entire world. Pius Valor was the sixth person in Greater Peak, and Amadeus was the strongest newcomer. Both of them were below the bone forging stage. Before they even started fighting, just the collision of their blessings of Mithraea would be enough to destroy everything, causing the five men from Pius Squad to suffocate. They were forced back dozens of meters. Amadeus. I have underestimated you. I'm afraid that your strength is already on par with that of Sergius Triarius. A trace of seriousness flashed across Pius Valor's cold face. Sergius Triarius was nicknamed Heaven's Supporting Hand. He was the tenth of the top ten warriors in Greater Peak. Even so, Pius Valor said. You still won't be able to escape death today. Remember, today next year will be your death anniversary. All of a sudden, the invisible blade force surrounding Pius Valor turned into a crystal blue saber blessings of Ithrea, as if it had substance. Is that the saber blessings of Mithrea? Valor has condensed that? A member of the Pious Squad exclaimed. The ultimate form of the invisible blade force was the Saber Blessings of Mithraea. Its power was several times stronger than the blade force. Usually, a Saber's men's training base would only reach the bone forging stage, and the inner force would transform into a spiritual energy. Only then could he condense the saber blessings of Mithraea. For example, when Pius Valor was only at the pulse opening stage level 8, he had already started to condense the saber blessings of Mithraea as a gladiator. It was very rare in the Mithraea warrior sect, let alone in the entire Roman Empire. I never thought that Valor would be able to cultivate the saber blessings of Mithraea in just a year. Unbelievable. It seems like Valor will be able to kill Amadeus in just a few rounds. Pius Valor had successfully condensed the saber blessings of Mithraea, and his combat strength had increased by a lot. Even if he wasn't as strong as Leo Marcellus and the three giants, Amadeus was afraid that he wouldn't be far from them. Pius Valor is truly worthy of being the number one saber wielder on Greater Peak. He actually condensed the saber blessings of Mithraea. A serious look flashed across Amadeus' eyes, but there was no fear. Pius Valor was somewhat beyond his expectations. However, Amadeus hadn't revealed his true combat strength yet. All right, Amadeus, go to hell obediently. A hint of cruelty flushed across the corner of Pius Valor's mouth. His entire body was boiling and burning. With a loud bang, he fiercely chopped down with both hands, and numerous after images flushed past. It was clear that his Incomparably fast blade speed was beyond ordinary, and it was difficult for one to catch it with the naked eye. Void Shattering Blade Dozens of saber blessings of Mithraea rushed out toward Amadeus. 
the air rumbled and exploded, and a series of storm clouds rose. The ground kept collapsing in on itself, forming several deep ravines. At this moment, Amadeus was like a helpless baby who was about to be mercilessly swallowed by the storm. Slashed out with his saber, and dozens of hundreds of saber blessings of Mithraea swept across everything. Each saber blessing of Mithraea contained a strength of more than 500 swordsmen. With dozens of them working together, he was as strong as a ninth layer combat trained warrior. If his opponent was not careful, he would be torn into pieces. What a terrifying attack! All the pious squad members were shocked, and their eyes were filled with pity as they looked at Amadeus. Under the saber blessings of Mithraea, even if Amadeus didn't die, he would still be severely injured. Right at this moment, Amadeus moved. He used the swift wind kick that he had obtained from Publius, then kept launching attacks. The saber blessings of Mithraea that filled the sky were completely dispersed, turning into countless streams of air that scattered in all directions. This is the swift wind kick of a mastery? Pius Valor's expression became serious. His eyes were filled with indescribable shock. If he remembered correctly, Amadeus had only obtained this swift wind kick a month ago, but he had already mastered it. And it wasn't as simple as breaking through. He was too talented. Even if he was one of the three overlords. However, Episode 47, Eight Desolations, Six Joint Slash In the next moment, endless killing intent surged in his heart. If he couldn't get a monster like Amadeus to die, Pius Valor wouldn't have a chance to live in the future. No matter what, Amadeus had to die today. Pius Valor, take this! As he spoke, Amadeus moved. He tore through the air and appeared in front of Pius Valor with lightning speed. He unleashed the strongest attack of the Wild Bull Pulse Opening Fist. Wild Bull Mountain Opening Fist. Although the Wild Bull Pulse Opening Fist was only a basic combat skill, Amadeus had mastered it to its peak. Its power was terrifying even more powerful than many yellow-level combat skills. Combined with Amadeus's powerful training base and bloodline, it had the power to split a mountain asunder. After Amadeus punched out, even the air was shattered. Impotent! Pius Valor's voice was filled with anger. From his point of view, Amadeus was like a fat sheep waiting to be slaughtered. He could do whatever he wanted. He never thought that this fat sheep would dare to bite someone. He had gone too far. In an instant, Pius Valor slashed out over a hundred times. In less than a breath's time, he had shattered the strength contained in Amadeus's punch and forced Amadeus to retreat. Amadeus wasn't surprised at all. If Pius Valor had been easy to deal with, he wouldn't have been Pius Valor. Amadeus's flying body twisted strangely in the air. The inner force in his body circulated to his legs. He kicked out small tornadoes toward his opponent. You're courting death! With a cold shout. Pius Valor waved the Overlord Strike. The terrifying saber blessings of Mithraea were torn apart. The sky and the small tornadoes collided in the air, 
and then exploded like fireworks. The collision between the two top geniuses of Elite Academy had reached a climax. Pius Valor controlled the Saber Blessings of Mithria, and it seemed like he could kill anything. Amadeus's swift wind kick was also extraordinary. He was like a spirit in the wind, and his explosive power was extremely strong. For a moment, they seemed to be on par with each other. Did I see it wrong? Amadeus actually blocked Valor's attack. How was this possible? A member of Pius' squad was shocked. Valor, who had condensed the Saber Blessings of Mithraea, should be an indisputable expert in Greater Peak. Amadeus, on the other hand, only had the strength to fight Sergius Triarius. Logically speaking, it should be Valor who crushed Amadeus. We have probably underestimated Amadeus. He's very powerful. He's probably as strong as Cortus Magnus of Cappadocia. Cortus Magnus of Cappadocia was the seventh ranked gladiator on Greater Peak, on par with Pius Valor. Amadeus is really a monster. He has only been at the beginning for a month, but he already has such terrifying strength. Fortunately, this monster is going to die soon. Otherwise, we will live under his shadow for the rest of our lives. The squad had absolute confidence in Pius Valor. Up until now, Valor had never used a true killing move. Amadeus, I have to admit that I underestimated you. As he spoke, the crystal blue flames of Saber Blessings of Mithraea were burning around Pius Valor's body. He looked like Mars had descended from the heavens. He was approaching Amadeus step by step with his blade in his hand. Every step he took, his blessings of Mithraea would rise, as if they would never stop. Dense crystal blue saber blessings of Mithraea rushed out of Pius Valor's body, wreaking havoc in the sky. His blessings of Mithraea were getting wilder and wilder. Wherever his feet passed, the ground cracked and exploded, forming deep pits. Dust flew everywhere, and gravel filled the sky. Ah! Look! Valor is about to launch his killing move! Amadeus could have become the number one person in Greater Peak, but now he is going to die here. I feel sorry for him. Why? Such a monster should never have lived in this world. Otherwise, we would have forever been trampled under his feet. That's right. It's all his fault for being too talented and intelligent. The members of Pius' squad were talking among themselves. None of them noticed that the main character of their discussion did not show any signs of fear under such a hopeless situation. Instead, he appeared incomparably calm. Pious Valor's might finally rose to its peak. Above his head, the air was rolling like waves. The sound of tidal waves was heard, like rolling turbid waves spreading to the left and right. Suddenly, Pious Valor's eyes moved. A terrifying blade light flashed across his pitch black eyes. He looked very domineering. Amadeus, I prepared this attack for Leo Marcellus and the others. Now, you won't have any regrets if you die under my blade. Pius Valor was like a high and mighty god, announcing Amadeus' fate. In the next moment, a domineering force swept out violently from Pius Valor's body. The air in all directions suddenly split apart, scattering in all directions. At this moment, he was like the legendary tyrant restraining himself. Die! Eight trigram six joint slash! At this moment, 
pious Valor no longer held back. He unleashed his strongest attack, the 8 Trigram 6 Joint Slash, and was ready to kill Amadeus with a single strike. He shouted coldly. Both of his hands tightly grasped the overload strike, and the Void fiercely slashed down. His attack speed was far beyond anyone's imagination. In just a breath's time, he had slashed out 300 times. The 300 Saber Blessings of Mithraea superimposed on each other, forming a huge Saber Blessing of Mithraea. On top of this Saber Blessing of Mithraea, there were also terrifying electric arcs flickering in the air, as if 10,000 snakes were calling around it. It was a shocking sight. In an instant, the terrifying saber blessing of Mithria had sucked out all the air in the space in front of it, forming a vacuum without any resistance. Amadeus, be a nice boy and go to hell already. A cruel smile appeared on Pius Valor's face. His blessings of Mithria increased crazily once again. The air around him was lowered and thunderclaps could be heard. The huge saber blessing of Mithria was like a tyrant that had gone on a rampage. It swept across all directions, and even the sky seemed to be mercilessly cut off by it. Wherever it passed, the air would shatter like a mirror, and deep ravines could be seen on the ground. Sandstorms could be seen everywhere within a radius of 300 meters, as if it was the end of the world. What a terrifying attack! Just a trace of it is enough to make my soul tremble. Is this the true strength of Valor? He is really too strong. Leo Marcellus and the others are only so-so. Amadeus will not be able to escape this time. The surrounding pious squad members kept retreating until they were a thousand feet away. Only then did they manage to stabilize their bodies and look at Pilus Valor with respect as if he was a god. Amadeus, you should be proud to be able to force me to use the 8 Trigram 6 Joint Slash. A gloomy light flashed across Pius Valor's eyes. He looked at Amadeus as if he was looking at a dead man. Suddenly, Amadeus moved as well. A fierce and domineering force emerged from nowhere and soared into the sky. At this moment, Amadeus seemed to have grown a lot taller, like Heracles of old, suppressing the heavens and looking down on all living beings. You are not qualified to take my life. The void trembled, and a wisp of solar golden flame cut through the endless void. After entering Amadeus' body, his blessings of Mithra rose again and again. His body shone with a golden light, as if he was Helios, who controlled all the light in the world. His divine might was like a prison making people prostrate themselves on the ground and worship him in their hearts. Sun Palm! A flaming palm the size of half an acre of land ripped apart the void and pressed down on the gigantic saber blessings of Mithraea. Wherever the flaming palm passed, there were traces of destruction. The saber and the palm collided and explosions could be heard without an end. Great electrified storm clouds kept rising up, as if a dozen calamities had happened at once. The saber blessings of Mithra and the raging flames kept colliding, entangling, and destroying each other in the air. However, it was obvious that the saber blessings of Mithra were being destroyed faster. This time, Amadeus had the upper hand. How could this be? The complacency on Pyre Valor's face had disappeared, replaced by disbelief. 
No one knew better than him how terrifying the 8 trigram 6 joint slash was. On the entire greater peak, except for the high and mighty three giants, no one could withstand this killing move of his. Compared to Pius Valor's shock, Amadeus seemed much calmer. All of this was within his expectations. In the past month, he had been practicing the Crimson Cloud Palm. He had successfully made the Ardent Sun Art reach the Great Perfection stage, and had also integrated some of the essence of the Crimson Cloud Palm into it. This had improved its quality to a whole new level, and it was almost comparable to the yellow level intermediate combat skill. Although it still couldn't be compared to the 8 trigram 6 joint slash in terms of grade, the huge bloodline difference was enough to make up for it. Although the rank 8 high grade bloodline was only one level higher than the mid rank 8 bloodline, there was a qualitative difference. Furthermore, Amadeus's mental state was much higher than Pius Valor's. Under such circumstances, it was perfectly normal for Amadeus to have the upper hand. The last traces of the saber blessings of Mithria were finally destroyed. The flaming palm, which had shrunk by half, didn't slow down at all. It continued to rush toward Pius Valor. This is bad. The high temperature, which was burning like magma, finally made Pius Valor come back to his senses. His facial expression changed to one of fear. Without caring about anything else, he hastily fled into the distance. At that moment, the flaming palm exploded without any warning and turned into countless fireballs that shot toward Pius Valor like a meteor shower. It was too much for him. Even though Pius Valor used all of his skills and increased his speed to the limit, a small portion of the fireballs still fell onto him. The power of each fireball was no less than a full power to tear ball was no back from an ordinary 7th layer gladiator. Even though Pius Valor's body had been tempered by the saber blessings of Mithraea, he still couldn't withstand such a violent explosion. A mouthful of blood spurted out of Pius Valor's mouth. His legs went soft, and he fell to the ground. Smoke came out of his body, and there was a faint burning smell. The whole place was silent. The five people of the Pious Squad were all shocked. And were all shocked as if they had lost their souls all of a sudden. Their eyes were dull, and they couldn't help but mutter. It's not real. It must be an illusion. How could Valor lose? This is all fake. They couldn't believe what had just happened. Pius Valor was the sixth person in Greater Peak. After condensing the Saber Blessings of Mithraea, he would be able to compete with the three giants. How could he possibly lose to a newbie like Amadeus? While everyone was still in shock, Amadeus walked up to Pius Valor and looked down at the Valor from above as if he was looking at a weak end. Valor... I'll help you die. Amadeus said in an indifferent tone. Between life and death, Pius Valor felt fear and despair that he had never felt in his life. He wailed. Amadeus, don't kill me. We are fellow disciples of the same sect, and the sect strictly forbids us from harming each other. If you kill me, you won't have a good end either. Valor? The rules of the sect are only applicable on the mountain. You are the one who told me this. The corner of Amadeus' mouth curled up, 
and a trace of a cold smile appeared on his face. All right. Valor, be a good boy and die already. His kindness to his enemies was equivalent to their cruelty to himself. He had known this since he was eight years old. Since Pious Valor had decided to become his enemy and set a trap to kill him, he had to be prepared to die. No, I am not willing to accept this. My talent is extraordinary, and my comprehension is unparalleled. In level 8, I have already condensed the Saber Blessings of Mithraea. In the future, I will definitely become a peerless swordsman, and I will be respected by all the people. How can I die here? This is bad. Amadeus wants to kill me. Everyone, please save me. Pious Valor's unwilling shouts finally brought the Pious Squad members back to their senses. Immediately, they unleashed their movement techniques and rushed towards Amadeus. But they were too far away. Amadeus moved his right arm and punched Pious Valor in the chest. It was like the sky had collapsed, directly shattering Pious Valor's sternum and heart. Episode 48 Defeat Everyone When Pius Valor was eight years old, he started to train to be a gladiator. When he was 12 years old, he started to practice. When he was 14, he entered the knighthood of the order. And now, he had even condensed the saber blessings of Mithraea. In the future, he was bound to become a great figure. But, due to his greed, he had provoked Amadeus. Finally, he died before he could complete his dream. He truly felt very regretful. Amadeus, you really dare to do this? Everyone watched Amadeus mercilessly kill Valor, and they were instantly stunned. Their eyes were dull, and their faces were filled with disbelief. He can kill me, but can't I kill him? Amadeus said with disdain. As he spoke, Amadeus walked over and took Pius Valor's bag from where it was lashed to his purebred stallion. Pius Valor was a mighty warrior of knighthood of the order. He was very rich. This was definitely beyond the imagination of ordinary people. Even though Paulinus Barbo had been managing this place for many years, he was still the master of level one servicemen's peak. Even he couldn't compare to Pius Valor. Amadeus naturally had no reason to let Pius Valor go. Amadeus, Valor was your. Don't you care about the friendship between fellow disciples? Amadeus snorted. What a joke. When you set up the trap to kill me, why didn't you stop to think that I was your? Humans are selfish. If a person wanted to kill someone, they wouldn't care about the friendship between brothers at all. But when others want to kill them instead, they ask you to care about the friendship between fellow disciples. They want you to be merciful. How could there be such a cheap thing in the world? Everyone, don't say anymore. Let's kill him together and avenge Valor. The one who spoke was a young man who had handsome facial features and was in his 20s. However, his lips were very thin. He gave people the impression that he was a heartless person. Basilius Sextus had been Pius's second in command. He was a seventh layer mid-stage. Among the nearly 10,000 disciples of the Knighthood of the Order on Greater Peak, he was ranked 48th overall. Now that Pius Valor was dead, he naturally became the backbone of the Pious Squad. Basilius Sextus' words had finally made them realize that this was not the time to talk to Amadeus. They wanted to kill him to avenge Pius Valor. The next moment, 
the members of the Pious Squad turned into rays of light and circulated their movement techniques to the maximum. They used all the skills they had learned and lunged at Amadis. They planned to avenge Pious Valor, who they respected in their hearts. But there was an exception. That was Basilius Sextus. He was the first person to shout out revenge. Although he had also raised the movement technique to its peak, his technique to its peak still managed to escape. In an instant, he had already run far away. Revenge for Pious Valor? Only fools like you would do such a thing. You don't have any ability. But you want to take revenge on Amadeus. Fortunately, you fools stopped Amadeus. Otherwise, how could I escape so easily? Basilius Sextus, you lied to us. The other four pious squad members now understood that they were being used by Basilius Sextus. At the same time, they also realized the huge gap between them and Amadeus. Even if they were united, they could only fight a warrior like Sergius Triarius. Amadeus was even stronger than Pius Valor. He had even killed their strongest member, Valor. If they rushed forward, they would definitely be killed. Right at that moment, Amadeus made his move. They wanted to kill Amadeus to avenge Pius Valor. But how could Amadeus not want to kill them? Crippling fellow disciples was taboo in this sect after all. Once the news was leaked, Amadeus would be in trouble. If he killed them, they would not reveal his secret. In an instant, Amadeus's figure moved, and he had already appeared in front of a member of the pious squad. Before that person could react, Amadeus threw a punch at him. This punch was like a great mountain pressing down on his body. Amadeus shattered his body into pieces. Amadeus, you are a devil. Amadeus, you will die a horrible death. A heart-wrenching wail came from the remaining three people. Faintly, there was a hint of disbelief in their voices. They could not believe that Amadeus would re not really kill them. You guys are too noisy. All of you go to hell. Amadeus shouted coldly. His eyes were filled with endless killing intent. The next moment, Amadeus increased his speed to the maximum. In an instant, he appeared in front of another member of the pious squad. He unleashed the wild bull mountain opening fist at that person. A terrifying force exploded out. It was like the furious strike of an ancient giant. The air in all directions immediately burst apart layer by layer. That member of the pious squad was also an expert from Greater Peak. His combat strength was not any weaker than Publius's. However, under such a terrifying strike, he didn't even have time to catch his breath before he was torn into pieces. He simply had no room to resist or struggle. Now, Amadeus was truly too powerful. Ordinary disciples were simply no match for him. Ugh. Amadeus, I'll fight you to the death. A member of the Pious Squad wearing a blue tunic could no longer bear the anger and panic in his heart. He had gone completely crazy. He immediately used a forbidden technique. He crazily burned his own blood. He wanted to die together with Amadeus. You want to fight me to the death? You alone? Amadeus sneered. He struck out with his palm. The scorching flaming palm burned everything in its path. In an instant, he burned that young man to ashes. Three out of four Amadeus's adversaries had already died. At this moment, the only remaining youth, clad in green, was completely dumbfounded. He stood rooted to the ground, not escaping but he didn't challenge Amadeus either. His will had already collapsed. At this moment, sounds of anguish kept bursting out from his throat. His eyes were filled with fear. When Amadeus looked at him, 
He could no longer withstand the panic in his heart. His legs were soft, and he fell to his knees. He could not help but beg. Amadeus, I'm sorry. I was wrong. I beg you, please spare me. At this moment, no matter what dignity and pride he had, no matter the hatred between brothers, he had forgotten all of it. He only wanted to live, and he was willing to do anything. A deep sense of disgust flashed across Amadeus' eyes. He said coldly, Didn't you just want to take revenge for Pious Valor? Didn't you want to kill me? Sorry? If my apologies were useful, then there wouldn't be any dead people in this world. Amadeus showed no mercy. He directly smashed the green clothed youth's head into pieces. Fresh blood and brain matter splattered everywhere. You ran quite far away. However, can you escape? Amadeus looked at the black shadow that was about to disappear to the southwest and smiled coldly. With a flash, he turned into a gust of wind. Hurry up! At this moment, Basilius Sextus' mind turned into a single thought, which was to increase his speed to the maximum. He tried his best to escape, and he didn't even dare to look back. He understood that Amadeus wouldn't let him go easily. Once he fell into Amadeus's hands, only death awaited him. In the face of life or death, Basilius Sextus had unleashed all of his potential. His speed was beyond the imagination of ordinary people. In just a few minutes, he had already run a hundred miles and entered a dense forest. Amadeus probably did not chase after me. Basilius Sextus braced himself against an ancient tree and breathed heavily. He had run a hundred miles in one breath, and even if he had the training base to support him, he wouldn't have been able to bear it. Almost all his physical strength was depleted. Even the surging inner forces in his body were almost gone. However, right at that moment... A slightly playful voice came from behind Basilius Sextus. You run really fast. I almost didn't catch up. Basilius Sextus felt as if he had been struck by lightning. Even the sound of his heavy breathing had vanished without a trace. It must be because I am too tired and am having hallucinations, he told himself. It must be. Hallucinations? Very quickly... A sneer broke through Basilius Sextus's self-hypnosis. Amadeus, are you really going to kill us all? Basilius Sextus trembled and turned around. His voice was very sad. All of this was forced by you all. If you had defeated me today, would you let me go? Amadeus raised his eyebrows, and a trace of disdain appeared on his face. This... Basilius Sectus's face froze. If the shoe were on the other foot, there was no way he would let Amadeus go. All right. With Pius Valor and the others accompanying you in death, you won't feel lonely. Don't kill me, Amadeus. Please give me another chance. All of this was Pius Valor's idea. It had nothing to do with me. Basilius Sextus knelt down in front of Amadeus and begged. Amadeus smiled coldly. It was Pius Valor's idea. It has nothing to do with you. Yes, it was Pius Valor's idea. He wanted to kill you. I advised him to give up on that crazy idea. But he just refused to listen. Basilius Sextus wanted to grasp on the last straw he had. He put everything on Pius Valor. He did not hesitate to slander him. Actually... I wanted to inform you last night, but Pius Valor stopped me and even threatened me. If you dare to spoil my plan, then kill me first, he said. I really had no choice. You're worried that I'll inform on you? Hmm, then I suppose you'd better go down and tell Pius Valor about this nonsense. Amadeus took a step forward and looked at Basilius Sextus coldly. 
when he had fought Pius Valorgis now, Basilius Sextus had been the most excited. Now, he was reduced to a quivering, cowardly mass before him. Amadeus raised his right arm and prepared to kill Basilius Sextus. Episode 49 You Were Not Worthy to Be My Slave No, I was wrong. I really knew I was wrong. On account of the friendship between us, spare me this time. As long as you spare my life, from now on, I will follow your lead. If you tell me to go east, I will never turn to face the west again. If you don't believe me, I will swear on my heart. In order to survive, Basilius Sextus was going all out. Or, if you don't wish for me to leave your sight, I will even acknowledge you as my master and become your servant. Basilius Sextus' words were very tempting. His combat talent was good. It was as strong as Nero Felix and Tiberius Gabinus's. As long as he had sufficient resources, there was a high possibility that he would be able to break through to the combat master stage in the future. There were few people in the world who wouldn't be interested in such good things. Unfortunately though, he had met the ire of Amadeus Pulcher. Amadeus let out a cold laugh. Sorry, I'm not interested in that. He did not want to be stabbed in the back by Basilius Sextus. The scene from before was still vivid in his mind. Furthermore, a low rank 8 like Basilius Sextus did not have the qualifications to work under him. If he walked out of the Roman Empire, a low rank rank 8 would only be slightly better than an ordinary person. And sooner or later, Amadeus would walk out of the Roman Empire. Ever since he obtained the heaven and earth devouring method, his future was beyond imagination. It's done. Go back to the hells from which you came. Ugh. No. Don't. Amadeus did not give Basilius Sextus another chance to speak. Basilius, who was exhausted, could not even muster up the strength to resist. He only let out a roar of unwillingness before his skull was shattered by a blow from Amadeus. When he was sure Basilius would move no more, Amadeus skillfully took out a small bag from Basilius Sextus' chest. He did not leave right away. Instead, he sat down with his legs crossed and circulated the heaven and earth devouring method to devour Basilius Sextus' bloodline essence. Amadeus wasn't a pedantic person. He knew that the path of the gladiator was full of thorns. If he couldn't seize any opportunity to improve himself, even if he had the chance, his final achievement would be limited. Of course, Amadeus had his own principles. He could be ruthless to his enemies, but he would never become a murderous devil just to improve his bloodline. A few breaths later, Amadeus jumped up from the ground. An indescribable surprise flashed across his eyes. Basilius Sextus has allowed my bloodline to improve a little. In both bloodline and training base, that pious valor is far superior to Basilius Sextus. The more he thought about it, the more excited Amadeus became. After smashing Basilius Sextus's body into powder with a punch, Amadeus rushed back to where he had fought before. He could not wait to devour Pius Valor. In less than two minutes, Amadeus had already gone dozens of miles. All of a sudden, Amadeus paused, and a trace of seriousness flashed across his face. A faint smell of blood drifted to him from up ahead. After killing countless exotic beasts, he was very sensitive to the smell of blood. An accident? Amadeus frowned and looked serious. He slowed his pace and moved carefully toward the source of the suspicious smell. Everyone was curious, and Amadeus was no exception. Soon, Amadeus arrived at the scene of the incident. In an open space in front of him, there was an exquisitely decorated carriage. Around the carriage, there were many people lying on the ground. 
Blood was dripping, and the dust was dyed red. Most of these people were wearing black armor. It was likely that they were the guards of some family. In the middle of the group of corpses stood a man and a woman. The man was about 30 years old. He had thick eyebrows and big eyes. He was tall and straight, and his breathing was as heavy as a mountain. He held a long sword dripping with blood in his hand, and his entire body was filled with killing intent. The woman seemed to be less than 30 years old. She was dressed like a married woman, with long and narrow eyes and a small cherry mouth. Her fair skin was extremely attractive, but with the blood-stained blades in her hands, it was as if a warrior goddess had descended. In a word, she was terrifying. It was obvious that the two of them had killed these people. The woman withdrew her blade, and without caring that there was still some blood on them, she quickly dashed into the carriage, as if she was searching for something. Very quickly, the beautiful warrior goddess found a white marble box. She came out of the carriage with a pleasantly surprised look on her face. She could not help but cheer. Julius, I found it. You really found it? Claudia, are you sure that it is the blood spirit grass? The middle-aged man tried his best to remain calm, but his voice was still faintly trembling with excitement. What? Blood spirit grass? When Amadeus, who was hiding in the dark, heard this, his heart skipped a beat. Pills had different grades. The elixirs used to refine all kinds of spiritual medicines were also divided by star level and then further divided into perfect, high, middle, and lower grades. For example, the main ingredient used to refine marrow cleansing pills, the body wash grass, was a one star highest grade spirit herb. As for the blood spirit grass, it was a high grade two star spiritual herb that was of a higher grade. It was the same as the body washing grass in one capacity, though it had the effect of increasing one's bloodline. However, its effect was several times greater than the body wash grass, and it would be a great help to the rank eight high grade bloodline geniuses. If a person could collect over a hundred kinds of spiritual medicines, after cultivating them into blood spirit pills, it would allow an eighth rank high grade bloodline warrior to become a peerless seventh rank bloodline genius. It would allow him to become one of the top geniuses in the Roman Empire. What good luck! If I can obtain the blood spirit grass and devour Pius Valor and the others, even if I can't break through the bloodline bottleneck in one go, it will save me a lot of effort. Maybe I'm not too far off. Amadeus was determined. No matter what, I have to get the blood spirit grass, he said to himself. The path of the gladiator is difficult and rugged. If I want to truly stand at the peak of the gladiators, I have to seize every opportunity to increase my strength. Otherwise, if I can only become an expert, I will be surpassed by others and disappear into the world. There were only so many resources in the gladiator world. If you didn't fight for them, there was only one outcome. You would be mercilessly eliminated by the world. Julius, you have to be at ease with my judgment. The beautiful warrior goddess smiled. He laughed. Good. I reached the perfection stage of level 8 a few years ago, but due to the limitations of my bloodline, I've never been able to break through the barrier and reach the realm of nine heavens. With this blood spirit grass, my bloodline will advance by leaps and bounds, and I will break through to rank 8 in one go. I might even be able to reach intermediate rank 8. In the future, I might even have the chance to break through to the combat master stage with the condensation of spirit bones. The middle-aged man laughed complacently, as if he wanted to vent all the pain he had suffered over the years. Julius, let's not stay here for too long. It's better to leave as soon as possible. The beautiful warrior goddess looked around in melancholy and urged him to leave. Claudia, 
You are right. If they wait for the Neas family to arrive, it will be difficult for us to leave. Adrian Julius stopped laughing and said this with a solemn expression. Although they had killed most of the guards, a few people had been able to run away. This place wasn't too far away from Pistoria, where the illustrious Neas family was located. It might not take long. The experts of the Neas family were about to arrive. As he spoke, he prepared to bring Claudia away from this place. However, right at this moment, a ruthless look flashed across her eyes. Her right palm struck out like lightning, hitting Adrian Julius's back. She shattered Adrian Julius's heart, making him fly out like a sandbag for more than 10 steps and fall to the ground. <coughs> Claudia, why do you want to kill me? Adrian Julius kept spitting out blood. His eyes were filled with disbelief and shock. Claudia Cezo's parents died when she was young, and he had adopted her. He taught her the way of the gladiator. He had always regarded her as a trusted subordinate. It was not an exaggeration to say that. He didn't even trust his wife as much as he did Claudia Cezo. Even if everyone betrayed him, Claudia Cezo should not have betrayed him. Julius. I also want top grade spirit herbs like the blood spirit grass, but there is only one here. I have no choice but to let you down, Claudia Cezo said apologetically. In his disbelief, Adrian spat out another mouthful of blood. Have you forgotten who took you in when you were lonely and had no one to rely on? Who taught you the way of the gladiator? Without me, you would have starved to death on the street. Are you worthy of my kindness? Julius, don't worry. I will definitely repay your kindness in nurturing me. When I return to Pistoria, I will kill my sister-in-law and little nephew and let them die with you. I will make sure that your soul won't be lonely and helpless. Claudia Cezo said, but her words sent chills down his spine. She had killed a Julius, her great benefactor. She even wanted to kill his family. Her methods were simply too cruel. Adrian Julius's heart was filled with anxiety and anger. He spat out another mouthful of blood and his face twisted. He was like an evil ghost from hell. Evil ghost from and his eyes were filled with enmity. Ah, you will die a miserable death. Even if I become a ghost, I'll find you and take revenge. With a shrill scream, Adrian Julius tilted his head and breathed his last. His eyes were filled with anger, and it was obvious that he had died with regret. Amadeus's face froze as he watched the scene in horror. Claudia Cezo had taught him a lesson. Such a delicate and beautiful young woman was actually such a vicious person on the inside. She had portrayed the word ungrateful to the extreme. He was too shocked, and it made him careless. He stepped on a withered branch and broke it. Claudia Cezo was like a cat whose tail had been stepped on. She whirled around and looked vigilantly at Amadeus's hiding place, her blade unsheathed and ready for more action. Who is it? Come out. Episode 50. Was this seduction? What an ungrateful woman. She is insane. Amadeus walked out from behind the ancient tree with a cold face. He had been thinking about whether or not he should kill the pair of warriors, but now he did not care anymore. Sure, the warrior goddess had killed her accomplice, but a frenzied man like Adrian Julius shouldn't have survived in this world anyway. What a reckless kid! Claudia Cezo's pretty face turned cold, and her eyes were filled with endless killing intent. Suddenly, though, her body trembled, and she stared blankly at Amadeus's left chest. 
you are a disciple of the Mithraea warrior sect. Although the special tunic of the Mithraea warrior sect had different colors and styles, they all had one thing in common. Underneath the left shoulder of the tunic, there was a pin depicting seven small stars arranged in the shape of the Big Dipper. Of course, disciples had different identities, and the color of the stars was also different. Disciples of the Knighthood of the Order, like Amadeus, had silver white stars. This was a common practice. The disciples of the other major sects had their own marks as well allowing the people of the world to clearly distinguish their identities. This was to prevent their fellow disciples from not knowing each other, or even creating a situation where their fellow disciples were crippled. The most important thing about the big sects was their extravagance. How could a disciple walk through the world without making a name for himself? You do have good eyesight, Amadeus smiled proudly. Toward these rogue gladiators, the sect disciples had a natural sense of superiority. Hearing this, a trace of fear flashed across Claudia Cezo's beautiful eyes. The disciples of the sect were not to be trifled with. They had a strong foundation and were far above the rogue gladiators in. Almost everyone had the ability to challenge those at a higher level. With her training at the 8th level of the mid-stage, she could be considered an expert within a few hundred miles of Pistoria. But to a colossus like the Mithraea warrior sect, she couldn't even be considered an ant. Any disciple of the Nine Master they sent out would be able to kill her. But soon, the fear in her eyes was replaced by boundless killing intent the blood spirit grass was a matter of great importance. Once the news spread that she had it, there would be no place for her in the territory of the Roman Empire for 100,000 miles. No matter what, this brat had to die today. I can't afford to offend a disciple of this sect like you, and I don't want to offend you either. If you want to blame someone, blame yourself for looking at things you shouldn't have and listening to things you shouldn't have heard. Claudia Cezo's voice was incomparably cold. You are so confident that you can kill me? Amadeus looked at Claudia Cezo with some doubt. This woman's training was not bad, and she was even a little stronger than he was. However, her bloodline was too weak. It was only a rank 9 high-grade bloodline. Moreover, the rogue gladiator's foundations were very shallow. Any disciple from the elite academy would have the strength to fight her. It's very easy to kill someone like you from the Mithraea warrior sect. Claudia Cezo walked toward Amadeus with a ferocious smile on her face. The disdain in her eyes was obvious. She was afraid of Amadeus, but she was more afraid of his identity as a disciple of the Mithraea warrior sect. She wasn't afraid of his strength. The knighthood of the order was mostly at the intermediate pulse opening stage. But this man in front of her was still so young. A sixth Empyrean training base was his limit. With her training base, it would be very easy for her to teach him a lesson. Kid, remember this when you arrive in the afterlife. The person who killed you was Claudia Cezo. Oh, really? Go on then. I want to see how you kill me. Amadeus sneered, but did not retreat. In fact... He advanced. Whoa, kid. I wouldn't do that if I were you. You are courting death. In the blink of an eye, Claudia Cezo slashed the air 18 times. 18 invisible blade forces whistled through the air, rushing toward Amadeus. 
the air exploded, and the ground collapsed under his feet. Still, Amadeus stood. This is your strength? You are really too weak, Amadeus sneered, his face full of disappointment. Claudia Cezo's realm was still higher than Pius Valor's, but each of Pius Valor's saber blessings of Mithraea exceeded her strength. Compared to the disciples of the sect, these gladiators were too weak. In an instant, Amadeus had shattered the 18 invisible blade attacks. What? How is this possible? He's just a puny disciple of the knighthood of the order. How could he have such strength? Claudia Cezo widened her eyes. She was extremely shocked in her heart. The 18 strikes of the whirlwind was her famous ultimate skill. If she was more careful, she would have killed her opponent. If I didn't have any other means, I would have killed you. Amadeus took a step forward, a mocking expression on her face. D don't come any closer. Claudia Cezo subconsciously took a step back, and her voice was slightly trembling. She was no longer as arrogant as before. Looks like you do not have any other means. Then you should obediently go to hell. Don't kill me. At this moment, Claudia Cezo was completely flustered. Amadeus's roar was too shocking. Claudia Cezo could not muster up any will to resist. If he really attacked, she absolutely could not be his match. Amadeus remained unmoved and continued forward. Every step he took seemed to step on Claudia Cezo's heart. The huge pressure made her unable to breathe. Sir, I am willing to hand over the blood spirit grass. When Amadeus was three meters away from Claudia Cezo, she could no longer withstand the huge pressure and took out the white marble box that stored the blood spirit grass. Looking at the white marble box that Claudia Cezo handed over, Amadeus could not help but sigh again. Compared to the sect disciples, these rogue gladiators were really too weak. In the Mithraea warrior sect, all of the top 200 disciples had a small bag of combat and spiritual supplies on their person. No matter what, this Claudia Cezo was an expert of level 8, but she didn't even have the skills to put in a small bag in the first place. Very quickly, a trace of excitement in Amadeus' eyes turned into a blazing fire. The blood spirit grass was about to become his property. Claudia Cezo suddenly got up, and her knife went straight for Amadeus' heart. When the tip of the knife was three inches away from Amadeus' heart, a large, white hand grabbed Claudia Cezo's wrist. The sound of bones breaking and miserable wails sounded at the same time. The intense pain caused Claudia Cezo to drop her blade. Ambush! What a good technique! Amadeus said, holding Claudia Cezo's wrist. Amadeus's expression was cold. She was a poisonous woman. She was able to mercilessly attack her benefactor who had raised her. How could Amadeus not be wary of her? Master, I was wrong. I know I was wrong. Please, give me another chance. As long as you don't kill me, I can do anything for you. Claudia Cezo begged pitifully. Amadeus's ruthless palm shattered her skull. She didn't understand how Amadeus could be so cruel, even as she died. Wasn't a boy like Amadeus one who was helpless in the face of temptation? Amadeus glanced at her with disdain. 
she had underestimated him too much. If he really wanted a woman, given his current status in the Mithraea warrior sect, as long as he asked, many female disciples would be willing to spend the night with him. He bent down and took the white marble box containing the blood spirit grass from Claudia Cezo's hand. A rich, medicinal fragrance assailed his nostrils. Not bad. It is indeed the blood spirit grass. After putting the white marble box in his small bag, Amadeus moved forward. He had clearly heard what Claudia Cezo and Adrian Julius were saying. The Neus family would arrive very soon. It would be best for him to leave this place as soon as possible. Before Amadeus could walk far, a furious howl suddenly sounded behind him. Leave the blood spirit grass behind. He's so fast. Amadeus' face tensed up. He stopped in his tracks for a moment, thinking through his situation quickly. If he didn't send the people behind him away, he wouldn't be able to go and devour Pius Valor's bloodline essence in peace. A faint fragrance of wood gradually filled the air. It was like the forests along the banks of the Tiber River, but also like the fragrance of pine trees. Vaguely, there was even a hint of oleander in the air. In the next moment, an old man dressed in a green tunic landed several dozen feet away from Amadeus. He had white hair and a youthful face. He seemed to be no less than 80 years old, although he looked to be less than 60 years old. He was thin, but the blessings of Mithraea and blood in his body were as strong as tidal waves. The energy seemed to have substance, as if 10,000 horses were galloping, and his momentum was astonishing. Ninth grade huge perfection. Looks like it's going to be a little troublesome this time. Amadeus's expression changed slightly. His state of mind was as strong as some bone-forging combat master warriors. With just a glance, he had already seen through the training base of the old man in front of him. Little thief, hand over the blood spirit grass. If you do, I will be so kind as to leave your corpse intact. The emaciated old man looked down at Amadeus from above. Old man, you found the wrong person. I don't have the blood spirit grass. Amadeus said with a cold expression. Although the rogue gladiators were not as powerful as the disciples of the sect, the old man's actual combat strength seemed strong. It would be best if they didn't fight. Little thief, don't try to argue with me. I saw you take the blood spirit grass of the Neus family with my own eyes. Hand over the blood spirit grass now. Suddenly, his expression changed slightly, and he said in shock, You're a disciple of the Mithraea warrior sect? The emaciated old man finally saw the silver Big Dipper symbol on Amadeus' left chest. That's right, Amadeus admitted frankly. I don't think this little thief is more than 28 years old. This matter is a bit tricky. A wisp of deep fear flashed across the emaciated old man's deep eyes when he heard this. He was unlike Claudia Cezo who only knew a little about the Mithraea warrior sect. He knew that even if a disciple of the knighthood of the order of the Mithraea warrior sect could descend the mountain, he would only wander a few hundred miles around the Apennine Mountains. Those who could travel a thousand miles away from the Apennine Mountains were basically the best of the knighthood of the order disciple group. Furthermore, the person in front of him was still so young he might be a keen disciple of the Peak Pulse. If he really killed Amadeus here, once he was exposed. However, 
the blood spirit grass was a very important matter. If word of this got out, the consequences would be unimaginable. <laughs>